following is a video tutorial to show you how to make a uh, floor plate like we find in the slave caves in Teladon. Get rid of my video recorder here. Okay. Uh, this is basically how I set it up. There's probably a couple of different ways to do this, but this way actually looks a lot like the way Cyan did it in Teladon. Uh, what I did is I've uh, got several objects that you can see here in my 3D scene. I have a uh, region sensor, I have the actual plate that is animated, moves up and down, I have a, a kickable here, and the green wire box that you see here is my sound emitter. Um, I actually cut a hole in the floor here, let me move that so you can see it, and below that you'll see a little pink plane. Now this pink plane is actually uh, not the not the right box. <laughs> here we go. This pink plane, as you can see over here, is a proxy terrain. That means it will not be visibly rendered, but it will support the avatar because I cut a hole in here. And you don't want your avatar standing on or interacting with an animated objects with physics. It, it sometimes doesn't work that well. But, of course, this is to keep the avatar from falling through the floor when the plate animates. And all I did was uh, just create the plane to fit the hole just below the ground. And gave it a page info. And gave it a physics type of proxy terrain and set exact on it. So, let's go back and put the plate in. I put my plate in, gave it some material here, and I animated it. It's... Only 10 frames, I made it go down. As you can see, it goes down. Like that. And I gave it an animation component. And of course, in the uh, graphic editor, the dope sheet, I've got my markers put in. Oops. A little higher here. I'm working a little slow this morning. Here we go. Uh, oh, that's the collider. Again, I'm running slow this morning. Sorry. Here's the plate with my note tracks and, of course, the two key markers that need to be there for its animation. Now, I created my beautiful rock here. <laughs> I just took a sphere and deformed it and threw a material on it. You'll also notice that I have it slightly above the ground. This is going to be a kickable. And when you make kickables, it's always a good idea to have it uh, just slightly above whatever it's going to rest on. Uh, so that when you link in, the physics for it takes over and it would drop to the ground. If you try to put it right with the ground, a lot of times you'll actually have your kickable drop through the ground and disappear. And, of course, we don't want that. <clears throat> to make a kickable is pretty easy as, as far as uh, just having something there. You, of course, put a page info on it. And you give it a physics type called uh, simple. And the reason you do that is you can adjust the mass, the bounce, and the friction. I've left it a default here. Its mass is 1.0, which is 1.0 uh, uh, kilograms, uh, about 2 pounds. And I could have adjusted the, the uh, uh, friction or the bounce. The other thing you want to do is have it say start inactive. And the bounding shape, that's really going to depend on what you've made. I used exact instead of sphere simply because I wanted it to not roll too much like a ball although it does <laughs> uh, uh, not covered underneath this tutorial but uh, the other things you would do is you would actually parent or uh, make a child uh, several sound emitters and actually parent, uh, have the parent be the kickable itself and these sound emitters uh, actually will help produce the impact sounds that you hear when you do a kickable I did not do that for this because uh, that's not what this tutorial is for and that will be covered under a different tutorial Okay, so we've got the kickable, I have the plate with its animation, the sound emitter itself is a single, I just have a single sound emitter, you could put more than one if you wanted to, uh, actually, I'm sorry, I do have two uh, sound emitters, one for uh, the down sound, the pressure plate going down, I used one of the Teledon uh, AUG files for that, and I have a second emitter here that's called uh, SFX plate emitter up. And it plays the up sound. So I do have two here. I apologize for that. Uh, you could 
possibly put in more if you've got a much more complex uh, uh, animation going on here. All right, now to what actually makes this work. That would be the region sensor. I made a box. It's kind of tall. It's 10 feet tall. Sank it a little bit into the ground. It's translucent because I went into its properties. And I've shown you this in other videos. I'll show it again here. You go into properties for it. And normally on your shape, your property is going to be 1.0. And when it's 1.0, it's solid like this, but I wanted to be able to see in it. So you just right click, go to the properties for that object. And I had it set at 0 0.5. And when you do that, it becomes translucent. So I like doing it because I like seeing the different colors. Now, I gave it a page info, and obviously we made it a region sensor in the components manager by calling up, you know, new detector region sensor. Uh, which I'm not going to show you. you. You should know that by now. And in the rollout for it, though, I wanted it to detect the avatar or the clickable, or kickable, not clickable, uh, the rock, by having a check mark in both trigger on enter and trigger on exit. And you click those two, and it, it acts as a detector for when something is actually in the volume. Now, and it, it causes a trigger when you enter, and it can cause a trigger when you exit. Now here's where, and I left the bounding shape uh, as whole. Now here's where it's different than most of the region sensors you've probably used. Normally it, you have report on avatar check marked over here as the default, and we normally leave that alone. That's because basically that's what region sensors are for, is to detect the player, what the player is doing. Well, guess what? You can change that. If I change it to dynamic, I can walk in and out of this all day long and it's not going to detect me because I, um, I'm not dynamic. I'm not the, it, you know, it's not looking for the avatar. It's looking for a dynamic object. A dynamic object is, you guessed it, the kick, click, uh, kickable. <laughs> so it's going to detect the rock but not the avatar. Well, we want it both because in Teledon, when you move in a uh, kickable, you have all those kickables, the bones, the, uh, what is it? baskets I believe they are and of course the rocks those are all kickables and it detects them when we put them on those plates but it also detects us the avatar when we step on it, it just makes sense you know it's more of a, a realism type thing going on there it makes more sense well you can do that if you come over here on the report on and click on both now the region sensor will detect both the avatar and a dynamic object such as a kickable so that's one of the unique things that you haven't seen before. Now the next thing I did is I created two responders. You could probably use a, uh, two st a single responder and give it two stages. I went with two responders. But I'm pretty sure it'll work with, the, with uh, it being two stage if you wanted to do it that way. Uh, but I did it with two responders. I assigned two and I called one the plate down responder and I called the other one the plate up responder. Let's look at the plate down responder. Uh, as you can see, it says plate region sensor. That's the sensor is the detector. That's what I put in here. And for the commands, I said set the animation for the stepping plate forward and then play that animation. And I also said play this sound emitter here. This is the sound emitter that makes the down sound. I also said turn yourself off and turn on the second responder. If you go to the second responder, which is the responder for making the plate come up, you'll notice down here in the bottom, the responder starts off initially as off because I've removed the check mark from enable. However, back at the down responder, one of the last commands was said, turn it on. So now the plate responder has been turned on. The detector again is still our region. I said set the animation backwards, play the animation, that means it's going to make the plate rise up, and play the second sound emitter, which is the up sound of the plate rising up. I also said turn yourself off and turn the plate uh, down responder back on. Now again, you could uh, do um, what we call a two-stage responder on here in which what you would do is just create one responder and you would have this set of commands here except you wouldn't be turning any responders off or on you could leave those commands out 
but you would have to go over here and say add a state and as you can see we're now in state two and you need to make sure at the end of state you say go back to state one and then I would come over here and say animation stop because if it's in the, if the rock or the player runs through it really quick you want that to be detected and have the animation stop and then of course since this is going back up we say set backwards and I would come in here and set up the uh, animation for the uh, plate select the object and of course you would do the same thing for stop setting it backwards and now we say animation play and of course you use the buttons to select the plate animation and we also want the sound to play and the sound that we want is the sound emitter for the plate going up is what we would do with that emitter okay and that's what your second state would look like and again you'd have to make sure that the the it says at the end switch to the first state you have to go back to the first state and you need to make sure that where it says at the end switch to state you need to change that to two so that's how you could use a single responder to do the same thing that I'm doing with two responders okay if you've done all this you're ready to export and give your plate a try as far as what do we do if we move the rock slowly onto the plate and it stays down like in Teledon. We link out when we come back. That rock should still be there. And the plate should still be down. For that you would have to set up SDL states. For your animated objects. And for your kickables. And of course you would have to use some of the global pythons. However that's beyond the scope of this video tutorial. So if you've followed everything that I've talked about. As far as setting up the two responders. Or your single responder. You should be ready to export and give it a try.